Hello friends, back again with uh, a few more videos today and the lighting might be a little bit different but uh, that's because it's a beautiful day outside. It is a Friday today. It's about 1220 and um, before I forget, let me go ahead and set my timer so that I can get an idea of how long the video is running. Uh, it's about 1220, 1230 on a beautiful Friday day um, and it was, just, it was just too nice to, to leave the shades down and be you know, cooped up in this studio room without more you know, light than just the usual uh, fluorescent lights that I have right now. So I decided to leave the uh, blinds open and let the sun shine in. So, and plus I've got my overhead light on as well. So there might be all kinds of variations of light in, the next, uh, in this video and the next few videos, but that's okay. Uh, I've decided to go ahead and do my uh, review on the Martin Monel strings. I mentioned those previously in a uh, video uh, that I did concerning a review for the blue chip pick, which I'm still using. I'm loving it. Um, st still going to, you know, grind this thing and, until it can't take anymore, so to speak. Um, but let's just get right on into the review. I've had these strings on now uh, for about two weeks. Um, be about two days short of two weeks. And uh, I've played one full sh practice, not a show, but a full practice with uh, Wilder Mountain, my band. Uh, I've played nearly every day just practicing around with it. Like I said, since I got my blue chip pick, it's been hard to put this thing, the guitar down. I've been wanting to play it as much as possible. So I've played that, uh, practicing, and I've played just uh, recently, played uh, a recital with some of the students that I teach here in Cookville, Tennessee. So it's, it's you know, these strings have been on a couple of weeks and have been through several shows. I wipe them down every time so they don't get corrosive. One thing that I've noticed before I get into that, let me show you what these strings look like. These are, like I said, the Tony Rice Signature brand, Signature Strings, Martin Monell. They come in medium right now. They don't come in anything but medium. So that's gauges 13 through 56. And uh, that's what uh, Tony plays. That's what I play as well. I play medium gauge on this guitar particularly. Martin guitars most of the time are, um, and some of the high, high, you know, high, high model guitars are certainly usually um, built to handle medium gauge strings. And they just have a more powerful tone and uh, punch. But there's Tony on the cover. And I was given these at Spigma this year, uh, close to the, around the beginning of February. And they were handing them out at the Martin booth, so I, I gladly uh, took these and put them on and wanted to test these out. So it says on the back of the package here, CF Martin and Company crafted these fine Monel strings to the exact specifications of legendary guitarist Tony Rice. Made with a long-lasting nickel-based alloy, these strings quickly mellow to a warm vintage tone that bring out the unique woody sounds in your acoustic guitar and it was said that when tony first put these strings on he used to use these and i've got some um you know bio stuff here that i'm going to read here in just a minute but it was said that when he first put these on after they had discontinued these for a number of years because he used to use them that he said welcome back old friend so uh, he obviously loves these strings and i don't know it's it's a it's a little bit different between 8020 and phosphor bronze it's somewhere in the middle for me but let's go ahead and, and uh, I've got some notes here written out and we can kind of read some of those as we go along. Um, then I'll get into what I think of the strings myself. And if you hear a clicking noise, my microphone is actually behind me. So it might be hitting the, uh, the body here. So I may actually just go ahead and bring it up so that that doesn't happen. I'd rather you be able to see my, my uh, microphone source as to not see it and having this clicking all the time. So, all right, uh, the legendary bluegrass guitarist Tony Rice played Martin Monel strings. Now, once again, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, if it's Monel or Monel or Monel or whatever, but I'm just going to pronounce it the way, I'm, the way I see it. Uh, legendary bluegrass guitarist Tony Rice played Martin Monel strings loyally on Clarence White's 1935 D28, which is the one he's popular for, and probably yeah, the one that he's using here in this picture until they became available in the 1970s and he has been missing them ever since uh, it says the talented sound engineers at martin guitar worked hand in hand with tony 
to bring back to life his favorite sound, Martin Monell's. When the new formula was perfected and Tony put them on his guitar, he said, welcome back, old friend. Tony's favorite thing about Martin Monell's is that they don't change the timber of his guitar. The compound nickel-based alloy mellows very quickly to allow the natural woody sounds of the guitar to pour from the sound hole unaltered from the very first strum, okay? Now, I think, I don't, I'm not sure exactly where I got all this information. Some of it's from the, uh, uh, the Martin website. Some of it's from, I think there's a Martin guitar blog. It's their official blog or something like that, or maybe it's a fan blog. But there's different things that I came uh, up with. Another thing is from Wikipedia, I think, that Monel, what Monel actually is, says it's a trademark of Special Metals Corporation for a series of nickel alloys, primary composed of nickel up to 67%, uh, and copper, with some iron and other trace elements. Monel was created by David H. Brown, chief metal metallurgist for the International Nickel Co Company. Monel alloy is... Uh, 400 is binary, binary alloy of the same proportions of nickel and copper as is found naturally in the nickel ore from Sudbury, Ontario mines. Monel was named after the company president Ambrose Monel with, one, with two L's and patented in 1906. One L was dropped because family names were not allowed as trademarks at that time. So that's why the L was dropped. There's one L in the name of the, the metal. So it was named after the company's president, Ambrose Monel, and it is a nickel-based alloy uh, that's primarily, it says about 67%, up to 67% made of nickel. It's kind of like, you know, electric guitar strings are made of nickel. But it's a nickel hybrid with other materials like copper and iron and some other trace materials, which forms Monel. Okay, so it's not like electric guitar strings because electric guitar strings are mainly nickel. And these do have a darker look to them not tone but they have a darker look they're kind of dark looking and they're not as shiny as uh, most electric guitar strings because they're mainly primary nickel okay so uh, another section here says monel is used as the material for valve pis valve pistons in some higher quality musical instruments such as trumpets tubas and french horn rotors Roto Sound introduced the use of Monel for electric bass strings in 1962, and these strings have been used by numerous artists, including Steve Harris of Iron Maiden, The Who, Sting, John Deacon, and John Paul Jones. Monel was used in the early 1930s by other musical string manufacturers such as Gibson Guitar Corporation, who continue to offer them for mandolin as the Sam Bush signature set. So they've been around for mandolin guitar string or for mandolin strings for a pretty good while, apparently. Okay, so, um, and this is comes from uh, the link martinguitar.com slash strings slash string hyphen training. That's where this one comes from that I'm about to read. Monel is a nickel alloy that is known for its incredible lush tone. Though it fell out of popularity due to being a difficult material to machine, we are thrilled to have brought it back for use in our Tony Rice signature string series. Most players tend to describe Monel strings as sounding perfectly broken in right out of the box. Okay, so that's all I have for the actual, you know, where it came from, what it was about. And um, like I said, some of this stuff came from Wikipedia. Some of it came from Martin's actual website. There's also a, their blog. I think it's their blog. As well as that link I just gave you, martinguitar.com slash string slash string hyphen training. Um, so let's get on into what I think about the strings themselves. I think that uh, to me, they have mellowed out just a little bit. Uh, they're not as bright as what they were. They do have a very nice tone and I would recommend them over 80-20 bronze for sure. Uh, they seem to last a little bit longer. 80-20 bronze just seems to kill within the first week. If you're like me and you don't like to change strings a lot and you know, you can't afford you can't afford to change strings every week then you want something that lasts a little bit longer and if you don't like the coated strings which i don't see why you wouldn't then this is definitely a good good alternative of the strings that i've tried uh, recently that you can use that will last just a little bit longer like i said if you got if you have to you can use two different picks or you can just get you a blue chip pick which has you know a nice balance of, of highs and lows in the tone so that uh, when they die a little bit you can actually get past uh, you know 
your soloing and your breaks can can be um, louder in the midst of uh, a bunch of other instruments like banjo, mandolin, and if you're in a jam session and things like that. But uh, as we guitarists know, we get left out of the loop a lot when it comes to bluegrass. A lot of times the bands that we play in or the jam sessions that we play in, they like to hog the spotlight so they'll play over your break when really jam etiquette would be that they would actually kill the volume a little bit so that the guitar can get out there because if you think about it, guitar is just, you're playing most of the time one, maybe two strings at a time. If you're playing a mandolin, yes, it's a smaller instrument, but because the space of the instrument is smaller, there's less movement for the sound in the actual body, so it comes out a lot quicker and a lot more volume. Plus, every time a mandolin player plays one string, he's playing two. So you've got eight strings on a mandolin. You're playing two at a time at all times, at least two at a time. With a banjo, you've got this huge resonator, you know, head, and everything's made of metal, so it's going to resonate more than just a solid wood instrument. Uh, with a fiddle, it's just like the mandolin, it's very small. The space in the, the sound doesn't have to bounce too far and die a little bit before it comes out the sound hole. So it's, at, it's pretty much at its prime when it leaves the sound, the F holes, the sound holes. So you're outnumbered. <laughs> and if you don't have a band or jam session, jam, people in the jam session that know, you know, instinctively to back off when it's your turn to solo, then you need a string or a pick or combination of both that will get you past those instruments. And these are very good strings um, in that case because they, they do seem to keep their tone a little bit longer than uh, 8020 bronze. Have a nice deep, you know, that deep bassy tone there. Uh, I've noticed that they don't really have much corrosion on them, if, if any. Um, there's a little bit up here more I just play, you know, I use this for, I don't really know why it's up there to, to tell you the truth. Because um, I don't use that, that fret, seems like a lot. Maybe I do. Maybe it's for when I play that A chord. There's a little bit there of not really corrosion, but where the, the sheen of the nickel has worn down a little bit. Right in the first four or five frets. Um, there's hardly, uh, hardly any wear down here from pick. Now, if you look at this, you can tell my, where my picks most of the time, most of the time my pick is seated just behind the sound hole. That's the optimum sound level for me to get what I need. I can either go forward to get a, a, uh, a deeper tone, more of mids, or come back. If I need to, uh, that's another thing you can do. If you're needing to solo over another instrumentalist, another instrument, you can come back just a hair and increase that volume, increase that teeniness. In, in you know, in other words, that could be like your presence knob on your EQ settings or your brilliance knob. And so you can use that by way of moving and adjusting your pick if you need to. These do, um, I have noticed as well, these. It's been, like I said, almost two weeks, and I've, I've put these strings for their paces, and I'm gonna play them again um, very soon on, uh, at church on a singing that I'm uh, going to be going at to. Uh, actually, it's an, from this point in time, it's this coming Sunday. But uh, I've been noticing a little bit some tuning instability, just a hair. So sometimes I don't know if it's, you know, and I'm not bad to usually, you know, bump my strings, I mean, bump my tuning pegs uh, and get them out of tune. That rarely ever happens. So sometimes I'll take my guitar out of the case and the B string will be low or it'll be out of whack somehow. So a little bit of a tuning instability there has happened uh, since I've had these. Like I said, not major, not anything major. You can use your tuner and then just tune right up as well as, you know, use your ear to make the fine adjustments. But if you'll listen to the actual uh, blue chip pick review, I'd had those strings on there maybe, I don't know, maybe a couple days. Compare that video to the sound that you're hearing from this video and you'll get an idea of what they sound like. I'm using the exact same pick, exact same guitar, exact same strings. You'll be able to hear if there's a change in tone if you go back to the blue chip pick review and video and uh, see the difference because I play it in there. 
uh, some some songs and some well, not really some songs but just noodling around some licks and things and that's usually I think around toward the end of the video around the middle part because I, I you, I'm, I'm talking a little bit in the front to introduce the pick itself and talk about it so just fast forward a little bit to around the middle of the video and you'll see me start playing with it actually so let's uh, play around a little bit just mess around there's some uh, different things also, another video before I before I go any further, another video that I did that's probably going to be released before this one anyway, um, is the three and a half things I play when I first pick up my acoustic guitar. I made that video the same day, as you can tell. I'm, I'm I'll be wearing the same outfit as I did with the uh, uh, blue chip pick review. So you can actually go and listen to the strings on that one too and see. It's, it should be the same sound because it was the same day that I made that video. So I'll compare both of those videos to this one and you'll kind of hear the difference in the sound. So let's see what we got here with this uh, guitar so far. The strings, the Monel strings. Okay, um, another thing I'm noticing here is a little bit, like I said, um, this is a little bit better than 8020 bronze in the sense that it's it's not as, these strings are kind of warm, they're not very bright, so that when you start playing up higher, you do have a tendency to sound a little softer, so that would cause you to play harder, which would therefore, therefore hinder your speed, so that's something to consider. Um, <laughs> Another thing is that, that um, I like about these strings is that they don't really, they're uncoated, but they feel like the wiring, like Martin has really done a really good job on the winding, uh, not the wiring, but the winding, uh, because they kind of feel like they're closer together. I, I know that's kind of hard to ex explain and envision, but these strings seem like the windings are very compact because there's not a lot of... Uh, scraping noise there's not a lot of uh, friction to where you get caught when you're trying to slide it's pretty pretty fluid I mean it's pretty uh so that's sliding back and forth a little bit you can hear a little bit of but that's that's from a dead stop you know if you're there's not a lot of that i'm just saying that it's it's very smooth it kind of feels almost like it's coated because i don't know if the nickel itself might have a little bit of a difference than bronze uh, metals the the nickel itself may be actually a little slicker and a little you know smoother so it may be within that i'm not sure But it does have a nice punchy sound. It does have a nice, very nice sound. I would definitely recommend these strings, Martin Monel strings, uh, to anybody that likes just the traditional non-coated string sound. Um, as far as bringing out the woodiness in the guitar, I'm not really exactly sure about that. A lot of that, again, has to do with your pick. But... Uh, 
it does have a nice deep tone. Uh, it's it's a little bit um, less bright, like I said, than Phosphor Bronze, which I'm just diehard Brosphor Fawns fan. Brosphor, did I say Brosphor Fawns? <laughs> Phosphor Bronze. I'm a diehard Phosphor Bronze fan. Man, that's that's hard to say. Um, but uh, like I said, Phosphor Bronze is a little bit brighter. I'm just you know a diehard fan of that. But these are definitely strings worth considering if you are looking for uh, strings that are non-coated, strings that um, um, feel nice and slick, even without the coating. And, you know, strings that do really help, I guess they do in a way help that woody tone, that natural tone of the guitar. It just has a nice deep tone to it, but there's not a lot of brights in it, as you can tell. <laughs> It kind of melts together a little bit uh, better, a little bit, you know, there's not too much high, they're not too much low. There's kind of a nice balance. It does. There's a little bit more of an emphasis on the lows and the mids than there is the highs. But I will say one good thing about these strings is that they didn't die within a week, like some of the other strings I've reviewed. Um, unless they've, you know, I don't want to drop any names, but the ones that sticks out in my mind is uh, GHS strings, the Infinity Bronze or something like that. They died within like a couple of days. I mean, I've still got the review up here. It's an old review, but I've got the review up on this uh, channel here about the, uh, I think it was called the Infinity Bronze by GHS. Those strings, I mean, died big time. Um, some other strings kind of do that. Um, but this one actually has, you know, been kind of faithful in the last few weeks. I mean, to me, they sound, they still sound good enough. Yes, a little bit of brightness has gone out of them, so I have to work a little harder to get a solo out, you know, for brightness. But I'm not going to change them because of that. I'll change them when they don't stay in tune. When, they, when the tone completely dies, there's still plenty of tone in these strings. When they completely die is when I'll change them, okay? So I have not found any need uh, to change these strings right now because I'm, you know, they're still a powerhouse. So that's my review today. It's been kind of a long one. I'm, I'm just trying to you know, give you an overview of everything that I've come up to, to notice. Uh, if I think of anything else, they'll be in the next few videos. Uh, that I'll be doing today. So, uh, thanks so much for watching. Pick up a copy of a copy. Pick up a set of uh, these Martin Monel strings. Give them a try, and uh, maybe you can leave a comment below if you've tried these before, or if you're uh, later on if you do try them, you can come back to this video and leave me a comment of what you think about them. And you know, so any of your opinions as well will benefit anyone else that stops by, sees this video, and sees the comments below. So if you have any input on these strings at all, leave a comment below. And thanks so much for watching. And um, i got a couple more videos to make today. And so it seems like there's something I'm forgetting. I don't know. But check out the uh, website of my guitar, Bluegrass Guitar Course, that's uh, going to be coming out uh, hopefully pretty soon. I'd like for it to be. Still working on it hard and faithfully, and if you're not subscribed to that newsletter over at www.bluegrassguitaressentials.com, then you're missing out on all the updates. So, because I'm doing the, mainly the updates to that newsletter, so that I don't bombard YouTube with updates, and I don't have to post it on Facebook, post it on Twitter. I have one central location I can do this, so that minimizes the time I'm spending on this so that I can maximize the time I'm spending on working on the actual course and getting it done, getting it out there, okay? So check out that website, bluegrassguitarcentrals.com, and I'll see you on the next video, whatever that may, may be. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great, great day. I hope your day is as beautiful when you're watching this as today is for me. So God bless, and thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.